Hi, thank you for taking your time to participate in the presentation. This is Jake Lee and I'm a graduate student in Real Tech. And I want to welcome you to our presentation on um, engineered interspersed concrete cross tie. Uh, I will be in charge of the first part of the presentation and Mr. Arthur, who is the main researcher of this project, will make a presentation for the last part. So the title of the presentation is the field assessment of engineered interspersed concrete cross tie in commuter rail ballasted track. So the outline of the presentation is um, composed of introduction and motivation and analytical modeling and field experimentation, results, uh, conclusions, and future work. Uh, for the aspects of a uh, train operation company, uh, replacing all the ties at once, like from timber to concrete cross tie, uh, will cause large capital expenditure. Also, installing concrete cross tie among timber cross tie is not recommended for several reasons. First, there will be large variation in track stiffness between ties and the concrete cross tie, which is uh, much more steeper than timber cross tie, will uh, support uh, most of the load and this leads to rapid deterioration of cross ties and also track conditions. Also, significant track stiffness change will cause uh, abnormal vibration to both vehicle and track and this compromise ride comfort and safety because of uh, different track impact factor. Uh, because of the problems I mentioned on the previous page, uh, specially designed concrete cross tie named Keyway cross tie have been developed by the uh, company named Nortrack. And the design of this Keyway cross tie is intended to approximate the steepness behavior of timber cross tie like the below figure. And if you take a closer look on the below figure of uh, the first Kiwi cross tie, typical bright concrete cross tie, and typical light rail cross tie, the Kiwi cross tie is designed with uh, smaller cross sections than typical existing concrete cross ties. And also, the Kiwi cross tie tie design includes rail seat with elastic pad and this enables to cross tie have decreased uh, value of stiffness. So um, as a part of a pilot program, a communal rail agency starts to uh, replace the old deteriorated timber cross tie with new keyway cross ties. And also they want to evaluate the performance of Kiwi cross tie, uh, whether they are, they are able to replicate the steepness of neighboring timber cross ties. So based on what I have mentioned, the objectives of this project is first, estimate load sharing of interspersed ties via analytical methods. And second, uh, collect revenue service field data to evaluate the performance of track system upon installation of interspersed concrete cross ties. So uh, the below figure is the analytical modeling to compare the effect of inserting concrete cross tie in continuous welded rail timber co uh, cross tie track and uh, being on elastic foundation, the BOEF model was used in here, and the BOEF model is uh, well established and is known to be reasonably representative. So, um, for the stiffness of the concrete cross tie, the kappa was used to represent the uh, spring constant of concrete cross tie, and K was used as the uh, rest of the adjacent uh, track based on Winkler. So 
Uh, the governing equation for the BOEF model can be made like the one on the above equation in here. And after brief process of calculation, uh, the effect of the inserted concrete cross tie can be determined like the equation on the center. And in this equation, the uh, FCT divided by the FQ0 is the ratio of force applied to a concrete cross tie and a timber cross tie. And kappa is the uh, spring constant of the concrete cross tie, like I mentioned. And A is a tie spacing, K is the uh, timber tie modulus, and beta is the characteristic length of the track. So the result based on previous page, uh, previous equation are shown in the graph below and input parameters are introduced on the table. Uh, like you can see on the graph as the kappa uh, increases, the ratio of the force applied to the concrete cross tie also increased. Uh, furthermore, uh, considering the uh, the typical standard concrete tie track spring constant, the load applied to the concrete cross tie was like uh, 1.37 uh, times much more higher than the eight ad adjacent timber cross ties. Now I'm going to transition to our co-worker, Azarima, to start from the field experimentation. Thank you, Jake. So the second phase of this study was a field experimentation effort undertaken by, by our team here at Railtech, where we installed uh, sensors on track during an overnight work window. We installed uh, one vertical uh, load bridge and 24 potentiometers in a region of the track that had a randomly interspersed uh, keyway ties along with timber ties, as you can see here on the diagram in the bottom. We also see here a picture of one of those locations with the uh, string gauge bridge in the center and four of our potentiometers installed. So data was collected during the morning rush hour between around six o'clock in the morning to about noon for all westbound trains operating on track one. We collected data for uh, 10 tr total trains, which included uh, 12 locomotives, 116 passenger coaches totaling um, 100, sorry, 516 wheel passes that were analyzed uh, for uh, the results here presented. Here we see an example, a time history plot of a wheel load uh, in blue, vertical wheel load in blue and vertical displacement for um, an example tie in red. And we can clearly identify the locomotive wheel loads and the passenger coach wheel loads. So if we look at those wheel load results first, uh, separating between passenger coach and locomotives, we see that there's not a whole lot of variability uh, within each one of those two ca categories in terms of the, the magnitude of the wheel loads, the axle loads. And uh, we see locomotive wheels being uh, significantly higher than, than passenger coaches. And here on the bottom, we see that Passenger coaches were on average 16 kips, and for locomotives, those were about 37 kips. So more than, than twice. Now, if we look at results for cross tie displacements, here we see the results uh, shown in box plots again. And I just want to remind uh, you guys that box plots, uh, they show us a good way to simplify the presentation of the data where 50% of all of our data is inside that, that center box. And uh, the line in the center is the median value, similar to, to, to the average. And the whiskers and dots represent how much or how many outliers, uh, the spread of the data that is in there. So we'll be using a lot of these, these graphs moving forward. So it could, it could be useful to, to explain a little bit better what they are. So here what we see is results for each individual tie. Um, and we see that the displacements, uh, they vary quite a bit. And what we see is that the cross tie type variability uh, between timber and keyway is overshadowed by the magnitude of the just cross tie to cross tie variability. There's no pattern that we are able to observe in terms of how one is, is varying versus the other. 
So if we look at this in terms of the summary or the, the combined results for each one of those type of ties and breaking it again down into passenger coaches and locomotives did the, did the difference in the wheel loads there, we see that the median displacements are basically the same for both timber and, and keyway ties. Uh, 0.089 and 0.087 for passenger coaches and uh, basically 0.1 for under locomotive. So effectively the same results under those, those two types of wheel loads. Now, if we take it a step further and take those displacements and loads, we're able to calculate uh, a track modulus for each individual tie. And we do this using the single point load method uh, designed or developed and documented by by Celian Waters. And this method includes the wheel load, RP. It includes our track deflection, or W here, and it includes our flexural rigidity of, of the rail section. In this case, we're using 132 pound rail. So using that formula, we're able to calculate the track modulus for each of those uh, load displacement pairs. And here are the, the results that we see. Um, we see a, a zero value for cross tie 11 there. That was a, a potentiometer to malfunction through the test. So we don't have results for that one tie. But overall, we again see the same cross tie to cross tie variability happening that we observed in displacements. Those are very directly related. So we expected to see one, uh, the behavior be the same between displacement and track modulus. And if we look at a, at a five time moving average, we're able to smooth, smoothen that um, result a little bit and understand that in general, uh, our track is performing pretty evenly throughout between timbers and keyways. So as I mentioned, minimal differences observed on the track response for um, rail supported by either a timber or a keyway cross tie. And the keyway cross tie provided a similar stiffness response than the timber. Again, those being being brought about by just the evaluation of displacement and, and track modules results here. If we summarize and combine all those values, we see that median values once again are effectively the same for track modules between the timber cross tie and the concrete uh, cross tie, which is our keyway in this in this scenario. So just to wrap up in a few conclusions, our cross ties uh, present similar values of track displacements with very negligible difference between the two cross tie types. As a result of that, the similar values are also observed when we calculate track modulus. Again, those are directly correlated. Effectively, the keyway ties, they present a marginally lower average values, but very, very minor. Um, however, this difference could be related to some of the compaction underneath the ties and the support condition, uh, given that those have been recently installed and there's, they're just spot uh, replacements. So the compaction and the tamping on, on those regions might not have uh, been completed that well. They were also installed recently. Uh, I think within six months of us being out there, that's when they were installed. So there wasn't a lot of time for accumulation of traffic and, and settlement. So there might be some um, variability that, that arises from, from that. Again, just touching upon the, the variance in, in the results between the, all the cross ties, this may originate from those, as I mentioned, support conditions or maybe even uh, cross tie health in the case of timbers. And it is widely known and we've observed uh, multiple times in our research and, and within the literature that support condition and track modules values, they vary widely as a function of distance along the track. So all these results that we that we gathered and, and observed are within what we expected to see based on, on literature and previous experiences as well. As far as future work, this the, the study that we conducted here, they present, they provide us with a baseline level for this new keyway cross type and its behavior. Soon after installation, as I mentioned, they, they had been installed uh, less than six months before we went out there to, to collect data. 
We think that further monitoring is needed in order for us to be able to quantify the this cross ties behavior under um, additional tonnage accumulation, um, surfacing operations, as I mentioned, uh, actually having a production tamper go through and 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 tamp all the ties uh, similarly might create some reduce some of that variability. Seasonal effects, we were there during a winter time, so uh, definitely variations in temperatures and so forth can play a role. And also accumulation of freight traffic. It's a, this commuter rail line has um, sporadic freight traffic that, that runs on that same track. So that could also be something to, to look into. As I mentioned, this follow-up testing can ensure that the consistency of the QA tie performance compared to the cross tie to the timber cross tie and ensure that it is actually maintained under all these very um, operating conditions and and just time and tonnage and 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 so forth. So with that, I'd just like to wrap up by acknowledging our project sponsor of AECOM, our industry partner, Vost LP Nortrack, which is the designer and manufacturer of the QA cross tie. They've been very helpful in, in un helping us understand the design and understand some of the behavior. Um, some of our previous graduate students, Ryan Harrington and Camila Pereira, for their assistance with data analysis. And with that, I just want to thank you, thank you for your attention. Um, Jay Eek and I are available to answer any questions either um, in the, the comments section below or feel free to reach out to us over email if you have any additional um, inquiries or questions about our presentation today. Thank you for your time and have a good day.